It took all of 20 seconds of landing on this guy's homepage and watching uh, one of his videos that he entered in a contest. It's kind of like a highlight reel. Before, man, I was just like, this guy is a boss. I mean, it was an emotional experience, just like a story should be. He's a storyteller at heart. So Levi Allen, is, uh, he's an adventure filmmaker. He's shared a, uh, here to share some of the work that he does. We're not going to stand up and clap for him because we're going to start with some of his very powerful, very inspiring work. One, two, three. Don't you ever be sad. I'll lean on me when the times get bad. When the day comes and you are down in a river of trouble. My name is Levi, and I'm an adventure filmmaker from British Columbia, Canada. For the past several years, I've been living and traveling out of my van so I can produce independent documentaries and films about subjects I truly find fascinating. Seemingly ordinary people that are pushing their limits and doing something extraordinary. Part of what's made this all possible, which helps get me access to people to share these films with when I'm done, is that I've been using video to build trust with my audience. I'm convinced that authentic videos are the best way to build trust with your audience. And I don't think it should be reserved for just filmmakers. I'm really excited today to share with you how you can start using video today to further your message and reach your audience. I just wanted to say, hey, mom and dad. Here's some of the friends I've been making, mom and dad. I'm having fun in Boise. I'll send this clip to you when I'm done. Awesome. <laughs> okay, now, before I kind of jump into what I'm going to talk about today, I've got to be honest with you. Um, I haven't been honest. And that name right there, Alan, isn't actually my last name. It's Vanderquack. <laughs> and that's quack, like a duck. And when I first started freelancing, this was actually one of the challenges I ran into is I was trying to get people to be able to actually write down my last name without having to spell out all 11 characters. And uh, for me, I've always been immensely proud to be a Vanderquack, but I started going by Levi Allen, and that's kind of what I built it around. But Vanderquack to me is important because it reminds me of, of where I come from. And not just where I come from, more importantly, who I come from. And for me, that is my, my grandfather or my opa, uh, he emigrated into Canada in the 50s, and, and this man, I look up to him so much. And what I think is so cool about what he did is that he came to an entirely new space, a place that he had never seen before, something completely unknown. He had a little bit of courage to get there, and once he got there, through hard work and integrity, he built a life for himself by making things for other people. I think that's really interesting, and as I started to grow up, I started to ask myself the question, like, what will I build? Like, you know, what will that thing be? Because I felt the pressure of this legacy. Uh, this, this grandfather would come before me who had, like, built a life here, obviously thinking about the kids who would come after him and what that would mean. So I've, I've kind of struggled with this question for a little bit. When I was a teenager, I actually got to go up to northern British Columbia and see some of the, the buildings that he built. That's him in front of a chapel he built in the 60s. And then you really start to feel the presence of it. And that's why I'm, like, so energized to be in a room with people like yourselves. Um, because you guys are like my kind of people. You, you make things. Um, you build things for people to experience. You see something that you want to be in the world, and, and you make it happen and bring it to life. This morning, I'm pumped to talk to you about how video can help connect what you're trying to make and build trust with the people you're trying to reach. Because that's something that's really, really important. If you truly believe what you're making is better for people's lives, if you actually think that your product is going to solve someone's problem, 
that your, your message is actually going to improve someone's life, then it's, it's kind of your responsibility to see that message all the way through, isn't it? Like far too often we just stop at the craft part and we don't actually make sure that it reaches the end people to the fullest that it can. We spend all our time making it, but then we truly believe that it might actually help someone, but then we don't do all the hard work to actually make it reach them. And, and I think video is a really powerful way to build authentic trust with people, even with just a little bit of effort. And so that's what I'm going to try to get you guys excited about today. Um, but I want you to meet someone, and that's Florence the Adventure Van. And, and I moved into Florence uh, when I was making my first film. So I lived in it full time. It was quite an experience. And, and, and I did this while producing my first independent documentary called Untethered. Now, when I was making Untethered, there was kind of two big fears for me. And, and that was it would suck. And two, that when the time I was done finally pouring my heart into this thing, I'd get to the finish line and like no one would be there to care about it. Have any of you had fears that are similar to that with the things you're making? Yeah, you'll pour your heart into that thing, you'll get to the end, and no one will be there to care about it. But despite some of those fears, I proceeded to set out in making this film, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And, and that was actually really good, because doing hard work on your craft is actually really rewarding, as a lot of you know. We're actually often really, really good at that. We're good at doing the hard work on the things we actually really enjoy. That's why people can code for days on end while avoiding doing some of the other things they need to do. That's why graphic designers will redesign their logo a billion times before they do the other things they're supposed to do. And uh, for me, the craft part, I was nervous about it. But, but that actually wasn't what I should be concerned with. It was the, the bigger fear of no one's going to be there to watch it when I was done. So I proceeded to make this film, and, and launching it, uh, there was this period of a month where I held a premiere and I put it online. And it was kind of like a fingers crossed moment. And how did that go? That, that month stands out to me now as the most like, powerful, empowering month of my life. And I look back at that and that kind of is like my coming to age as an artist moment. And, and were people there to watch it? And there, and there was, which at the time, completely shocked me. The, the support that I received, like, floored me. And, and in fact, when I launched, launched it online, in the first several weeks that it was online, there was hundreds of thousands of people that interacted with it, helped spread it around, share it with people. And it ended up, I've got, I got contacted for international distribution, which was like, TV, cool. And it felt amazing. But one part I kind of skipped on this story was, while I was doing all of this, while I was making my film, while I was working on my craft, I was actually doing something else. And that was using videos, just raw, natural videos, to share the process of what I was doing. And so while I was setting about making the film, I brought people along the journey. And I also created little tutorials or things that I'd be helpful. But I got to say, one thing that was really cool was my wife, she took a flight. And, and my film was on the in-flight entertainment system. <laughs> And get, getting to see that on her Instagram story was like pretty amazing. So I'm very thankful for the support of my wife. Um, the single thing I did that made the biggest impact on launching a film of what was building trust with people. Now you can do this a lot of ways and often you guys, especially some of the people that don't uh, like to be as extroverted or external facing, you guys get really good at writing content. Uh, writing blog posts, writing things that are immensely helpful. But one thing that's really cool you can do with videos, you can add another depth to that. And you can share more about who you are so people care more about the words that you put on the page. Uh, Sean McCabe's work has impacted me immensely. And th this whole idea of making sure that you're writing down your ideas as you're having them, and you're actually trying to answer people's questions. That's kind of the whole approach that I've taken to video, but actually using videos to th take things a level further where they get to like, get more natural, uh, uh, authentic things out of the video. Um, and I want to help you guys today consider taking the jump into, into video communication and to build that deeper trust. Because I think, again, if you truly believe that what you're making is helpful for people, uh, it's kind of your responsibility. Um, and people, more, more than ever, are really hungry for authenticity. In, in an age where the kind of polished Instagram feed has become the norm, that's now just become people's profiles, or their, their portfolios, rather, and not necessarily a true glimpse into what their journey's like. So people want to connect with real. 
and they want to connect with the problems that people are going through. And, and video is one of the best ways to do that. Um, so let me clarify, I make films, but I, I use video to build trust with my audience. And, and being a filmmaker actually set me back years because it took me years to start because I had this vision of what it needed to be, this elevated perspective of the craft of filmmaking. It was just a bunch of BS, though, because all I needed to do was start sharing natural videos with people and make things that were helpful for them. So I'm not talking about just making films. I'm actually talking about how every one of you can start using the phone in your pocket to add a depth to your online presence. And I think that's really, really helpful and important. The people that you see that are winning right now in the online space that have audiences that truly trust them have a component of video to their brand. And so you guys that are starting out, you guys that are already doing video for your brand, I want to encourage you to take that even more seriously in your preparation for actually making things that people will enjoy and find helpful. For me, the biggest, hardest thing was starting. And I kind of had two fears when I was starting. And that was, well, I wanted it to be perfect, so that was the procrastination. And the other problem I had when I was starting is I didn't know what to make them about. And so this quote actually really resonated with me. It, it seems kind of simple. I think it's a Chinese proverb. But the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. And that's, oddly enough, a quote that really pushed me over at the start, where I'd been spending so, many, so much time observing other people build businesses that had online audiences for like several years. I'd watch people build things, and I felt like, hey, I, I could do that. You know, I, I could do that, but I, but I wasn't. And the problem is, is I was looking at the kind of end line, and I wasn't willing to take the first initial steps to get there. And that's where I, I, I've come to realize that confidence actually isn't that helpful. And the problem is, I'm a terribly confident person, and I'm not always courageous enough to do the actions I need to get to where I want to go. So confidence in my head that tells me, oh, I could go do that. I could build that thing. I mean, I could probably get the skills to do that, that, that sort of thing. But the courage is actually being willing to take that first step. And courage is this really interesting thing where, where I get stuck is I look at that end goal and I go, man, that's such a big jump to get there. And I see people that are building these massive brands and education products for people and they're truly helping people's lives. And I go, man, I don't know how to get there. And that's where I sat and I'd seen so many people do this and I hadn't started and I knew I should have. And so I did something in kind of a moment of spontaneity. I mustered up just enough courage, like just a fraction of enough. And things had lined up and things had been pushing me. And I like convinced myself I was going to start. But I was going to start privately. So again, Sean McCabe, he runs a business community. I was a part of that community and I made a commitment. I was like, I'm going to make four videos about how my journey to an online communicator is going to start. And so I, I made these videos one at a time and I shared them in this online community. And the feedback I got was really helpful and it was also just great to start to see myself because I see myself as a man of my word. Like when I say I'm going to do something, I, I do it. So I said I was going to make four videos in two months and I did it. And, and when I got to the end of that, I realized, okay, so I want to start making videos publicly. But my first videos <laughs> were about how I was going to start making videos. So what do I actually make the videos about when I put them publicly? Um, and that's where it, it really comes down to a lot of the same principles of the content that you guys already know how to make that people find helpful. One of the biggest mistakes to see people make when they start with video is they, they start trying to do only the lifestyle stuff. And the, the reality is you can make short video clips under five minutes explaining how to solve a problem that your audience really wants to know. You, you know, you've been getting those replies in your inbox. And, and yes, write a blog post about them. Yes, reply to that email. But how powerful would it be with, with, along with that blog post if you had something that people could watch to learn from? And, and one of the really interesting things and why there's so much power in video right now is because YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. People go there with their questions all the time. I think when I see people start, they, they sometimes will do these vlogs or they'll do these like passion videos, like, like how to make a business with your passion or something like that. But when is the last time you went to YouTube and typed in that search bar, how do I live out my passion? <laughs> Has anyone done that? I've made videos that had that in the title. What was I thinking? And that's, that's the fundamental problem in the way that we approach some of the online content we make, especially with the video stuff, is we make stuff that people wouldn't actually really want to consume. So I want to implore you, what kind of content have you been consuming, especially content in your space? 
and, and think to yourself, what could I make with my spin on that that would add value to reach the people that I'm trying to reach? Because there is inherent value with your perspective, the context that you live in. I, I had this problem where I thought, you know, everything around me isn't that interesting. And I started making videos about my small hotel in British Columbia, and, and people started messaging me saying like, man, you have mountains. I was like, I do. Yeah, we've got amazing mountains. And I completely forgot that that was a special part about my context. But answering that question of why should someone watch your video, that is one of the most important questions you'll need to keep asking. But that question isn't so helpful for starting. Uh, it's really great to answer questions, uh, but it's also a challenge because why should someone watch your video? That's what some of your insecurities are rooted in. And that's where that courage part comes in. So you want to try to make something that's actually truly going to be helpful. Because if you start there, and if you continue there, then if you keep making things that people would actually want to watch, then you're bringing something good into the world, and you are on the path to building an audience through video stuff. Now, for me, I started with an audience of zero. And so some of you already have audiences on your email list. And so you, you can push that audience already to your videos. But then you can also use YouTube itself to grow the audience. But the growing the audience with YouTube part, that actually takes a lot of time. And most people underestimate the quantity of time that that takes. I, I'm about two years into it. And for the first year, I was sitting at around under 1,000. And, and I'd put up previous videos in my high school days. And so I had a little baseline of 400. But people weren't really watching. And so one of the problems I faced was, how do I get something that people will watch? And that's where I answered the questions that I had when I started. So that's something that I really want you to take away. And also, will people miss this if I didn't make it? That's another huge thing. And as you begin making videos, so once you begin starting to call yourself someone that makes videos, you need to kind of ask yourself, like, hey, is this something worth watching? And I see a lot of people start with vlogs. I, th I think that's great. I think there's a lot of really powerful things that can happen in the way you think about your own life and your own story when you're forced to try to document it. But I also know that most people probably won't miss your vlog if it's gone unless you provided them with value as well. So that's where you really need to make sure that there's value in the videos you make. So for highlining, uh, there's actually a lot of carryovers that I've learned uh, between the sport of highlining and, and starting video. And, and so when someone's walking on a line like that, they definitely didn't start there. They started on the ground, and they learned all the technical skills. And that, that's the problem with video making, is we like to stop at the technical skills and just get overwhelmed by all the, the steps. And we, we think it needs to be this perfect studio video. And we spend so much time researching and adding things to our Amazon cart only to like never actually start. So I really implore you, a lot of you probably have cameras because you've convinced yourself you're good at taking photos. So you probably have a camera already. <laughs> so your Instagram feed can be better because you can't use your phone for your Instagram feed now because that's not okay apparently. You probably have a phone and that phone's really good. So all you need is a video capture device and making sure that you can hear the sound and that's the starting point. Do not convince yourself otherwise. If you convince yourself otherwise, you're cheating yourself. Because this is not true. People before you have built audiences of millions of people with video quality that sucks. You know why? It's because it's interesting. They're making stuff people want to watch. So with highlining, you learn the technical skills on the ground. And then when you get up into the air, you've got to try it on a highline. And, and there's this moment that happens where you know all the steps and all the technical skills. But then when you scoot out there on a line like that, there's a really interesting thing that kind of happens physiologically in your body as it, like, really doesn't like that scenario. <laughs> I've tried it myself, and I can slack land on the ground. I even snuck in a clip in that little highlight reel there of me walking above the water about this far off the ground. So I can do that. But when you get the, out there on a line like that, you need to walk yourself through this process of getting psyched up. You need to like calm everything. And you need to get into this zone. And often you're with a group of people that are encouraging you and telling you to try your best and to actually give it a go. They're telling you, you know, it's not okay if you just sit there on the sidelines and watch. If you're going to be up here with us, you got to get out there and try. And what trying means is standing up, falling, and catching on your leash. And that sucks. <laughs> I've done it like a lot of times in a row, and it sucks. See that little tail coming off in there? Well, when you drop off the line, you kind of swing like a rag doll. It's not very fun. But in your head, you can see where you're going. You can see down the line very clearly. And so it's a very simple sport. And the only thing left you have to do is to climb back up your rope and try it again. And so that's where, with filmmaking and with videos, if you're trying to make stuff that connects with your audience, often it can, at the beginning stages, just like feel like you're falling off a bunch. 
can feel like that actually for dozens of videos in a row. But occasionally, you'll start to take steps forward. And that's where a lot of momentum starts to build. And you get to make the choice if in each step, are you going to muster the courage to take the next one? Are you actually going to take a moment to address the fears that you may have and say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to those for now. I'm going to calm myself and give this next step a go, acknowledging that you might fall. And, that, and that's OK, because then you'll get back up and keep going. Um, to build the video communication muscle, we've got some amazing tools like Instagram stories and stuff like that. So that's a really great place to kind of start. Videos really do set you apart. So the people and the brands that are doing this are winning. And they're selling products to people because they trust them. And, and there is a bit of a diminishing return at the start. So having a few videos is far better than having zero at all. One is definitely better than zero. If someone can visualize your face, especially if your voice is important to the brand, if the emails you're writing, you're wanting them to hear you, adding a little video in there is really powerful. To take things up a notch, um, I really recommend starting to learn how to incorporate like storytelling techniques into your videos. And so some of the ways to do that with lifestyle videos is including your personality to the fullest extent. And, and one of the problems I had when I started uh, is I'd watch like the first dozen videos that I put out and, and I really didn't like the way that I came across on video. I kind of like changed a little bit. I kind of like became a little presenty, and it sounded like I was preaching to people and I really didn't like that. And one of the biggest breakthroughs I had was realizing this video is gonna be watched by one person. When I hop on a FaceTime call, I've got no problem just like chatting with that person and being real. So how about the next time I'm walking down the street, I'm carrying my camera and I feel super awkward, why don't I just pretend I'm on a FaceTime call with someone? And don't kid yourself, when people see you filming around, they don't actually care what you're doing. I'm sorry, but they aren't paying attention to you enough to really actually care. So forget the people, but for yourself, the way that you're coming across in that video, remember that one person is going to consume that. And, and what you can do is you can take your personality and just kick it up a little bit of a notch when you're on video, because often on video you actually tend to scale back a little bit. So if you're wanting to be natural and if you want people to actually connect with who you are, you can take your personality and just kind of bump it up a little bit. You're trying to be you, because don't get me wrong, the YouTube people, they know when you're not you, and that's not going to jive with them. So maybe your audience might be okay with you being a little presenty, but if you're trying to grow on YouTube or a platform like that, you've got to be authentic to yourself. Learn about conflict and how that can add to your story, how you can use your brand narrative and the struggles that you're going through to help make it rocket fuel for your video. So you can make something that someone wants to watch from beginning to end. Most people don't want to watch you sit there for three minutes just rambling on about something and it's not very clear what the point is. Address the problem that you're experiencing. Talk about the things you've tried to solve it. This sucked. When the van breaks down, it's not a good time. But once I've started doing this vlogging thing, I actually kind of celebrate conflict in my life a little bit because it gives me something to share and be excited around. So the last kind of closing thought on video stuff that really challenged me was even as I'm building this stuff, like. I watch so many people build the numbers. I watch so many people build these massive followings. And so I like really was unsatisfied with the numbers I had. And if you ask me now, I'm still unsatisfied with the numbers. But the difference is I'm, I'm really grateful. And that is because, you know, I've been, I've been learning this comparison game really robs you of that opportunity to be grateful at the current stage you're in. So if you're gonna get into this video thing, it's an extra level of personal. If someone rejects your blog post, it's like, yeah, those were just my words. So you know when you're putting a video out there that it's yourself. And so it can hurt just that extra bit more if it doesn't feel like it's working. But be persistent and remind yourself constantly when you're editing that video, is this something that I would actually watch? Unfortunately, I've put out a lot of videos that I would not like to watch. And that's really too bad. You don't need to grow a massive, multi-hundred thousand viewer audience or even tens of thousands audience on video to actually have it have an impact on the stuff you're trying to sell. It can actually have a massive impact even on the smaller scale. And we just sometimes forget that because the numbers seem so important. It's got that view count right underneath. It's like screaming at you like, this is how many people watched and liked it. So when are you going to start? I recommend that you all start. 
I think this is really important. I think in the digital age to have representation of your personal voice with your face behind it just adds so much depth. And you can take it so much farther than just the basics of doing stuff on like Instagram stories. You can make incredible videos that people will enjoy watching. You can actually use it to not only satisfy your current audience, but build a bigger one. So I recommend make a commitment. Muster up just enough courage in a moment to say, hey, I'm going to do this then. I'm going to do this by then. Tell someone. Send them, send them a text message. Take a screenshot of it and send it to me, and I'll hold you accountable. My email is levi at leftcoast.co. Send me an email. I'll hold you accountable. I want you guys to start. And I want you guys to lower your expectations a little bit on the numbers and increase your expectations of what you can give to people. Because if you're truly making stuff people will miss when it's gone, you're making the world a better place. Thank you.